This is the AGT-1 Easy Operation Guide. Uh, when you're using your tester, make sure that you have uh, the, this uh, guide handy and make sure you've read through the, the, the steps, uh, and it is pretty simple, uh, before you operate the, the, the machine. If you purchased a, a, one of the machines and it doesn't have one of these, they can be downloaded from the Jim Oral Products website. Uh, but this is very simple steps. Make sure you're using this. Uh, and if you have any questions, never hesitate to call our 800 number, 527-0719. We'll be happy to help you. Thank you. This is the Jamoro Oracle AGT-1. Uh, I'd like to show you how to, to properly use and calibrate the AGT-1, uh, and I'm going to go through the entire process. Uh, first of all, uh, the tester may be used with a 9-volt battery that comes with it or uh, an AC adapter. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use the, the battery. When you turn it on, flip it to the bat, bat's position. All the lights will flash on and off twice. Uh, that, that's showing that it's going through the boot-up process. Uh, and when it's ready to test, it will say ready. And the LED on the, the far right of the bar graph will go to NA. Uh, once this is done, uh, the next step that you go through is after you've got your pen probe plugged in, you want to take your pen probe uh, tip and you want to dry it on a paper towel. Uh, the reason you want to do that, the pen probes when they're, they're new especially, that they have a tendency to be overfilled by the factory. And the reason why, why we do this is to make sure that the user gets the, the, the most uh, amount of uses uh, possible. Uh, we uh, uh, state that the, the pen probe is good for, for at least 5,000 tests. Uh, but again, when the, they are, are fresh, they tend to, to drip a little bit. So just dry it on a paper towel, and you want it the consistency of a, a normal felt tip marker. Uh, from there, what you do is you want to put an electrical current into the pen probe, and that, that's called charging it. The way you charge the pen probe uh, is to touch it to uh, a, a piece of gold. Uh, and for this demonstration, I'm going to use one of the 14 karat uh, Jim Oro uh, yellow gold discs uh, that we have available. And this is what we recommend uh, that you use for the, the, the product. Uh, so you touch it three times. And each time you wait for the LED to settle, it doesn't matter where it settles because we haven't calibrated it yet. Two. This doesn't take very, very long, uh, so it's, it's not a big deal, and you need to do this every time uh, when you turn the machine on. You need to recharge the pen. So now that the, the pen probe is charged, uh, the next step is to calibrate it. Calibrate it, touch the 14 karat yellow gold again, and then hit the calibration button. Wait for it to settle. Now, one thing I didn't do uh, that, that we do recommend, uh, especially uh, uh, if you're using the same calibration piece repeatedly, is to file the calibration piece. Uh, in, in this case, again, we're, we're using our, our calibration disks, uh, but oftentimes uh, 14 karat gold that you may use uh, from your, your scrap gold uh, may have uh, an 18 karat or, or, or higher karat plating on it. Uh, to make it appear brighter or more yellow. Uh, that's not ideal for calibration purposes because you, you want uh, gold that hasn't been plated. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why we suggest our, our disc. But uh, to, remedy the, to remedy that, you can file the piece uh, with the, the file that comes with it. Uh, and by filing it, you get through the, the surface of, of the gold and you'll be able to calibrate it properly with, with uh, uh, your, your scrap gold that you may have. Uh, so, uh, again, to check the calibration process again, touch it to the gold, wait for the LED to settle, and hit the calibration button. And it needs to go in the center LED. Uh, that needs to light up. Again, checking it. That's showing that it's calibrated. From there, we're ready to go. Now I have some different gold samples that we can test. Uh, I neglected to file this. First thing you want to do, you always want to file the gold that you're about to test, and you want to test the area that you file. A simple test like this 
or I'm sorry, simple, simple scratch filing like this is what you want to do. You don't want to file over the testing plate because that'll make uh, gold uh, particles fall on the plate. So you file it lightly, and it doesn't matter how you have it positioned on the plate, but you want to touch the area that you file. In this case, we're 18 karat. And finally again, that's the area that you file. Now this is 10 karat. Once again, file. Now as you notice we're using a, a, the diamond file that comes with it. Uh, periodically you want to take that file and, and wipe it off with, with a, a towel just to get the, the particles off of it because it will uh, will uh, uh, have some gold particles or platinum particles on it. So when I, I touch the platinum, as you notice, it goes to the PT section on the far right. Uh, it is acceptable if it also goes to the NA at the far right. Uh, that's just part of the programming, but typically it will go to the PT, especially if it's filed. Uh, periodically, take the, the pen probe and wipe the tip with the paper towel again. That's going to take any gold particles that, that will uh, uh, start to accumulate on, on the, the pen probe over a period of time. Uh, the pen probe has a special saline solution in it, and you'll notice uh, that periodically uh, crystals will form on it. Uh, that's fine. That's just a natural process of, of uh, the, the, the salt, uh, but wiping it on, on a paper towel will remedy that. Also, you'll notice that over a period of time, it will start to get darker on the end of the pen probe. Uh, again, Cleaning that with a paper towel is fine. You never want to use any water or uh, uh, cleaning solutions uh, to clean it. Just a dry paper towel that's clean is all, all that's, that's required. Uh, also, when you're testing, make sure that you, you test with the very end of the pen probe. That's important. Uh, you will potentially get a, an inaccurate test if you test with the side of it. It has a tendency to, to go up a little higher than it actually is. Uh, but using the very end, you'll get accurate results every time. Pen probe cap, make sure you, you close it until it snaps. That, that will uh, make sure that it stays uh, uh, preserved uh, and uh, won't dry out. Uh, here's a, a gold plated piece. Same process. Test it where you file, and it says NA. Now, when you're you're testing, make sure that that uh, none of the saline solution accidentally spills over and touches the testing plate uh, while you're calibrating or testing, because that will short out the test. It, it won't hurt the unit, but it will give you a, a bad test. Uh, so also, so again, make sure you're you're touching only the gold. And we're back to 14K. Uh, other than that, when you're testing white gold, just things to look out for. Uh, white gold is very commonly uh, plated with rhodium, and the reason for that is to make the, the white gold whiter or brighter. Uh, rhodium is a different metal than white gold, uh, and it has a tendency to test higher. But if you follow the instructions and you file it like, like I explained, you'll, you'll get a, an 18 karat uh, a test every time. Um, so again, rule of thumb, always file it uh, uh, for two reasons. One, you want to make sure that, that you're, you're getting through whatever plating that might be on it. Uh, two, uh, if someone's trying to fool you or someone's uh, trying to sell you gold and they don't realize that they have uh, uh, gold that's fake, uh, you need to protect yourself because this is a surface tester and you always want, want to file it to make sure you get through the, the surface to the base metal underneath. And other than that, the tester is very easy to maintain. Clean it, file it, take the testing plate, just wipe it with, with a dry paper towel from time to time. You can use a, a moist paper towel as well, but uh, you don't want the, the, any water or other chemicals, uh, period, uh, to get outside of the testing area. Uh, avoid using chemicals, only water uh, with a, a moist paper towel to, to clean the plate, and then dry it off as soon as you're done. That is about it. Very simple to, to do. We, we suggest the, uh, keeping the calibration discs on, on the testing plate. Uh, that way you can always uh, recheck it from time to time because you do want to recalibrate it periodically. Uh, and it, because it's so simple to do, it only takes a, a couple seconds. Like
keeping it handy. Uh, it's very simple to do. Uh, also, from time to time, this uh, replace probe light will come on. Now, that, that uh, indicator has two functions. One function is obviously if uh, the, the pen has uh, been used up, that light will come on indicating you need to replace it. The other indication uh, is if the unit is out of calibration. Uh, so if that light comes on, the first thing you should always try to do is calibrate it. Typically the, that uh, will make the light go out because again the, the probe is good for 5,000 tests so it should last you a really long time. Uh, that is about it for our tester. We hope you use it and get a lot of, uh, many years of great use out of it.